Authors Tell All, a podcast by Shy Soul. She's bringing you author interviews, book discussions, and more. Stay tuned.
Hi everyone, welcome to Authors Tell All. We are live with your host Shy Soul and our guest author Cache. How are you doing? I'm doing good. How is everyone? I'm, I'm blessed. It's I'm so glad to have you. We're gonna be discussing her book that is I don't I didn't even get any tags. Has it been released yet? Is it soon to be released? Yes, it's soon to be released. It should be released. Uh, about next weekend. Oh. I'm, I'm just gonna make everything, you know, popping. I'm just working real hard, but it's, it's about to drop. I can't wait because as soon as she sent me the cover to it, I was like, yeah, this is gonna speak a lot. Like just from the cover alone, I just really want to read it. Just period. Cause yeah. and the title purple bruises and busted lips this that oh my you should know just by that title this is gonna be really out there and she's gonna be telling a lot now you told me that this story is about whom um well it's a poetry book based on true stories from from my personal experiences of being abused and from other women that I have known, plus my mother, my grandmother, and just a couple of women I went to school with. It's just a lot of abuse going on, unfortunately. Yeah. So, what I wanted to ask is, was it really hard for you to write? Um, no. I, writing has always been my escape. Mm-hmm. When when bad things happen. I think that was the, the reason why I first started writing. I started writing when I was, actually, I started writing poetry when I was eight. Mm-hmm. Because I was sexually mol- molested, excuse me. And then I started writing fiction when I was nine. So it's pain. The, the pain I experienced is the reason why I started writing. That's what I love to hear because, you know, in my opinion, if you don't have that emotion, I feel as if the book isn't really going to, you know, speak to people. They're going to be like, how can I feel the emotion if I can't read the emotion, you know? And I really love that. I'm glad that you, you know, you're speaking volumes through your writing and I'm glad you're writing too because I've read some of your Upwork and it's so good. Yes, thank you very much. I appreciate it. You're welcome. So... Are you going to be nervous when this release is to come out next week? Or how are you going to feel about it when it comes out? Um, I'm going to be very happy. I'm going to be a little nervous when I go to a couple of the poetry clubs to recite some of the um, abuse poems because I got um, invited. But I'm going to go. And I'm just going to be passionate in what I'm saying because it's I just don't want to crash. That's when I end up reading, like, one of my poems. Mm-hmm. You know, one of the things that happened to me. But it's like I have to be strong and I have to, you know, speak this. Because, you know, I would like it to help, you know, a young lady or, or even a woman of my age. Whoever it can help is a blessing. Because when I was actually going through all of this, I wish I did you know have a book or something to read to help me so you know i just want to be a blessing to somebody else i love it i really really do love that um so my next question is like you said you don't want to you know cry when you read any of the poems that was going to be like my next question like what was the most emotional one that you had to write for this story for this book Put it in there halfway because I'm, I'm also writing a book about my life. 
Mm-hmm. And as soon as I finished eating a squash and a you know, choke with a dog chain, and, and I'm trying to get away, and I had to leave my my middle daughter, who is now 26, but I had to leave her, because basically he was saying that if I grab her up, he was going to shoot me, he was going to shoot her, so I didn't want her to get shot. So basically, to make a long story short, he, he attacked me, and I was bloody and beat up, but then he chased me down the street on Mother's Day, shooting at me with a gun. Mm-hmm. And it's amazing I got away, which I used to run track, so I was just, like, in a zone. I was like, I don't know. I was just like, well, you know, he, he not gonna catch, like, he was chasing at me, so I was like, he not gonna catch me. And he did, because I used to be sad back when I ran track, so yeah, he didn't catch me. Thank God. That is, that is absolutely crazy. That is, that is insane. And I know it's probably a few listening like, oh my God, like I am in shock right now. I can't wait to come out. I love poetry and I know, I already know my sensitive self. I'm going to have some tears in my eyes. I already know it's going to happen. Um, I'm definitely going to be the first person to get it, hopefully, because I'm going to even tell my mom to get it. I'm going to send you a couple of copies, yeah. do have a friend i'm definitely going to send this to her I'm definitely going to send this to her because she yeah. she really needs to read it you know i i know a few people and you know i'm the type of person that they always come to for advice and you know certain things like that but you can only get to through to them so far you know without just trying to yeah. be like want to shake them and just be like you know just leave but you know they can't because it, yeah. it's just so much emotion and all that built within them, they just feel as if they're trapped. So, I will definitely share this book a thousand times if I can. <laughs> yeah, I know that's a blessing. Yeah, I felt trapped. I felt trapped also to the point that I had to leave my, my city. I'm, I'm from the east side of Detroit. Everywhere I moved in Detroit, he followed me. Like, I had to leave my city. 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 This, that really sounds like some, like a fatal attraction um, type of story. Like, yeah. it really does. It, it was. And then let me tell you something. Like, like, like I say, back up being a narcissist, he, he, you know, he wants to be in control, in, in control of everything to the point that he told me that I was a, um, I was a write so many stories it seems like like but I know you don't want to write that over and over again but you just have a big story to tell like like I said that can be fatal attraction gladly nothing really 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 horrible happened to you which it did but you know you get what I'm saying um yeah. that's that's insane I, that's insane yeah 
I'm over here shook right now, guys. Really, I am. Because I did not know any of this. So, I'm surprised just much as you guys are listening. Because, oh my, oh my God. Yeah. Yeah, guys, good. And I thank Jesus because he was trying to kill me. And then he abused me when I was pregnant with my oldest daughter. And then I lost my, I was pregnant with twins. But my oldest daughter lived and my twin son died from me getting beat up. So that was rough. You are truly, uh, truly blessed. Um, yeah. So how long does it take you to generally write your poems or just a book uh, overall? self-published correct yes were you ever I was, I was, um, yeah I'm sorry. I was um published a couple of times with some other authors um let me see what was that back in 2007 I was in the trap of my the trap of my soul and that story was called breaking the chains of abuse um but back then I kind of spelled cash a little different um and then, I think in 2014, I was in the Saver um, anthology, and that, that story was entitled Satisfy Miss Kitty, so it was kind of like a romantic, sexual story. I mean, I can basically write anything, like any, even though I started writing because of pain, I love romance also, mm -hmm. and, you know, um, sexual scenes, and I mean, I can just write anything from contemporary to urban literature to just, I mean, one up on the east side of Detroit, you just see it all. So, what is the next stage of your writing? Like, what's next for you? Um, well, I'm working on this, this book right now. It's real deep. It's called Alpha Female. Mm -hmm. And it's based on, um, actually, it's a couple of alpha women in my life, but it's just based on some of my my uncle's stories can, can call with my own imagination. So basically, it's about a, um, a woman. She's like an alpha female, and her mother was addicted to drugs because she was very depressed. And so her father had to take over raising her, but um, he used to be a pimp. So he raised her very hardcore, and he basically taught her everything he knew. So she just very tough on men and everything in her life because she kind of saw her mother being kind of walked over. And so she said, she's not going to be like that. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's, it's very, it's going to be deep. <laughs> so how many books do you think you'll have out say five years oh five years mm. in five years I should have about 15 to 20 books novels maybe maybe even 25 because I have so many stories within me that I would like to tell. Mm -hmm. And as far as poetry books, I should probably have at least about 10 or 12 of those. But, yeah, about 10 or 12 poetry books and about 20 novels. Because I, like, 
like in my little home office, I have everything put up on my little board, this story, this title. And, you know, sometimes I like to buy my book covers early because my book covers kind of help me in... I'm always writing. Mm-hmm. Uh, always. I love to write. It's, it's a passion. It's been a passion since a child. Like I said, I started writing at eight and nine, but I really became very enthralled by everything I wrote in every chapter. When I was in high school, I was real deep. Plus, I was on the newspaper, and just I just tried to involve myself with anything that had to do with writing. Me, myself, I was the opposite. <laughs> it took me a while in high school to want, you know, everybody to read my stuff and all that. So I say about my senior year, that's when I finally, you know, I could have been had my stuff in our paper and our um, our journal books that everybody can purchase. And then, you know, there's the awards for it. You know, I could have been did that, but... Me, with my writing, I was so, like, closed off. You know, I was like, this is my personal writing. I don't I don't know if they're going to like it or anything like that. So, basically, all I did is I was like, you know what? I'm going to take this writing class. And my teacher, she, she said, you are a very good writer. You need to be, you know, putting your stuff out there. Because the stories that you're writing, if I want to know what's going to happen next, I know it's going to be other people, you know? So... She took the liberty and some other friends of mine to nominate one of my stories into our big old journal that everybody can purchase. I didn't even know it. I was like, wait, what? Who did this? (laughs) I'm like, who did this? And I won second place. So after that, I was like, hmm. So maybe I should be doing more with my books and stuff. Mm-hmm. So it just takes for yeah. somebody like that to bring you out of your shell. Yeah. So ever since then, I mean, I love writing. I, I really do. But that is what took me to like, I want to go to the next level and put my right. work further out there. So that's what we do. So um, do you like yeah. writing in first person or third person? I actually like both. Yeah. since you're the narrator you get to speak for each character you know you're the voice of each character but with first person that's the character that you're becoming so you know i love both but with first person that's my favorite because like i said we're becoming all the characters you know we got multiple personalities it's it's your movie it's Mm -hmm. your movie and you're Exactly. And as they say, you are you are on ad lib or whatever. <laughs> so you write the whole story, but Exactly. So, you know, I even I even tried it when um I was writing a story and I did first and third person. And it was hard because you don't want to confuse your reader. You know, you want it to all make sense. So when I submitted it to my teacher, she was like, okay, this is very different. She said, you have it where it doesn't confuse me, but I'm going to just tell you, she's like, I'm going to tell you this. 
they're gonna be like, wait, she went from first and now she's in third. They're gonna complain about that. It's not gonna be some people who's gonna like it, but not everybody. So you're definitely gonna have to choose between which one. I'm like, yeah. hey, I wanna write in both. <laughs> I wanna write in both. So yeah, so I, I do absolutely love both. So do you prefer just writing standalones or a full series? Um, I'm like, yeah. <laughs> I guess it's really based on what I'm writing. Because I was looking in my little journal. I have a, a journal. It's kind of big, actually. They got all my upcoming future novels that I'm going to write. And some of them are just standalone, but some of them need a part two and possibly a part three. Mm -hmm. So I guess it just kind of depends on the story. Almost like in some situations, the characters, you know, they kind of write themselves. Which, you know, when I, I be I'm looking at some of the other author quotes and they be saying how it's like their characters be talking to them. That is real. Especially with me. That is real. I could be anywhere doing anything whether I'm with my, my job or dealing with my younger my younger children and all of a sudden it's like you were here something somebody said something but it's the kids inside your mind you gotta hurry up and get your phone or your whatever and write it down so I won't forget cause you know as you get older sometimes you forget stuff but yeah the characters be talking that's real <laughs> yep and then some people and some people think we're crazy because we're saying our characters talk to us no we're not crazy we just have characters who are just that bold that we created that is speaking right. for us so excuse right. me for being creative <laughs> right I just said that so many you times exactly um, like I have, like you said, you have a big notebook with all your notes and everything. I have so many notebooks with so many storylines and everything. I don't do a regular outline. I just do just straight notes. That's it. Yeah. And I free write. Yeah, I do like that too. I'm so all over the place sometimes. But you know, when it's time to get on in there and start it up. Then I grab all my papers together, believe it or not, and sometimes I, I have it, you know, part one, two, three, and sometimes I don't, but I know, I know where it goes, like, it's something, I, all the pieces, you know, they fit together like a puzzle. Yep. So, what's the next stages for you? Will you turn some of your stories into movies one day, hopefully... Uh, have a series, a YouTube series, web series, anything like that. What's the next stage? Mm, that's a very good question. Um, yeah, I would love some of my stories to, you know, become a movie or even, you know, a play or anything like that. Yes, I would. Um, I would have to look into the um, YouTube series. But, yeah, definitely uh, a movie or some little, I don't want to say life, Lifetime, I don't know, um, Netflix, you know, whatever, because I'm very versatile. And um, just like I'm, I'm writing, I'm also next year, oh, I have so many books coming out next year, I'm very excited. Mm -hmm. Because um, I, was, I had to take a small little break because I was in the hospital, but now I'm back up and running. And, you know, I'm also putting a book out about autism because I have a, a autistic son. And so I'm going to write it, like, based on um what happens when the autism take over because it's almost like a, a Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde kind of effect. And I haven't really seen a book out here like that. So, like Toni Morrison said, if there's a book out here that you want to read, if it's not out here, then you have to write it. And so, yeah, that's just one of many. Um, yeah, I believe my books will go real far because mm -hmm. I'm very talented and I, I believe 
you know, the right type of people going to come across my stories one day and, you know, we can make a deal about a, you know, a movie or something. You know, uh, everybody always got that Tyler Perry dream. <laughs> I know I love me some Tyler Perry, and, you know, I believe if he read my stuff, he would, he would love it, too, because I'm not really a conceited person, but it's like, when you know what your talent is, you know what God and Jesus bless you to do in this life, you should be vocal about it. And I used to tell my mother when I was, like, 25 years old, it's a lot of things, I make a lot of mistakes, you know, I'm mm-hmm. only human, but if I can't do nothing in this world, I know I can write. Now, right. and it's enough money a thing for all of us. So I don't understand how sometimes, you know, you know, all that jealousy or whatever. I don't got time for that. I just want to write my story and get it out to the people. Because, you know, I, I have many stories to tell. But, yeah, I, I believe. I believe I'm a, you know, I'm trying to go straight to the top. Right. The top is, I'm, I'm on my way. <laughs> I'm believing it for you because I believe you definitely can. Where you can write can definitely happen. Um, Thank you. You're so welcome. Um, at this time, you get to tell me who you want to hear on the show, and you get to tell everybody where they can find your books. Um, if you have a site for that, you can tell me that too, and everything, and your social media, and so a few shout outs. So that's your time for all that. I know it's a lot, but yeah. Okay, um, hmm, who would I like to have on the show? I'll, hmm. Okay, well, as far as poetry, I would like to have, um, it's a, it's a very prominent, um, poet in the Detroit area. His name is Caesar. He's very, like, powerful in his poems. I would love to hear him on the show. Um, and as far as authors, mm. well, it's, it's a, it's an author that I, I don't want to, um, uh, I can't think of his last name, it's kind of long, but, uh, I got just need a, a minute for that, just one more minute, um, okay, as far as my, my Facebook right now, currently, it's, um, Cache Shea Blue Brown, as far as my Instagram, it's, um, Cache Right to the Site, and it's Cache Right to the Site because I write fiction and poetry, um, as far as my website, I'm working on putting that together, but the name of it will be Poetic Author 84, because I, be, I began writing poetry and fiction, in 1984. So, mm-hmm. that's, it's going to be Poetic Author 84. And, um, yeah, well, it's, it's, a, it's a lot of, you know, talented authors out here. Um, you know, Dane would be a good one. <laughs> I know she's very busy, but, I mean, I, I always loved her, um, the way she write about sex. It's very inspiring, because I can write anything, like I, like I said, and I, my sex scenes are very hot, also. Um, but yeah, whoever you have on here, yeah, I'm going to listen and support. Thank you. I was so glad having you on the show. Um, when the book comes out next weekend, you guys, I will definitely be doing a book ad slash commercial, whatever you want to call it, for our podcast, whoever will be on the show next week. Um, I definitely will be shouting that out. And I will have you on the show again when you come out with the new release. I cannot wait to have okay, you back on. You. Yes, I'm very happy. <laughs> it's okay, no problem. I am your host, Shy Soul. This is your author, Cache. I love you guys. Goodbye. Okay. Talk to you later.
Just one.